Alright, welcome back. Um, we are doing Thermodynamics 2 homework for at South Dakota School of Mines and Technology. Homework number 7 is associated with flash, but we also did a little bit of um, bubble temperature and dew temperature because we left that off from, from last week. Um, and so this one says, let's say I have methanol and benzene in equilibrium at this pressure and 25% of the vapor phase is methanol. Okay, 25% of the vapor phase, how do I read that? That means I have Y1, okay. which means I have Y2. Oh, and also says I know the pressure. Okay, so I know Y, I, and P. Uh, what is the temperature and what is the compositional liquid phase? Okay, so I don't know X, I, and T. Uh, assume Antoine's equation applies, assume the Porter model applies, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I look at this problem, well, this is a, this is a dew temperature problem. This is the one dew temperature problem, uh, maybe the, maybe number five is the dew temperature too, but, you know, I, th there's not many dew temperature problems I'm going to have you ask, because A, it's not very common that you do a calculation, B, it just takes so much time because you have the double iteration going on. But let's walk through it, okay? Um, but on, our, on your homework, what I want to see is I want you to see, I want to see the flow of the equations, okay? And maybe like, okay, at iteration one, this is what this is equal to. Um, so you get that from the spreadsheet. And then you use the spreadsheet to, to kind of, you know, figure out, okay, well, how many, how many steps within steps did I need to figure this out, okay? Um, and so let's do that. Okay, so I have... Let's see here. Well, what's the first thing I do? I, you know, I kind of recognize, I recognize it's a Rouse law problem. Okay, so I need to write down where also my IP is equal to XI, gamma I, PI set. Okay. Um, I also need to recognize that, okay, I know YI, so that means the sum of elevation of XI is equal to 1. Okay. Um, I don't know temperature, so whenever I don't know temperature, I have to guess temperature. And I guess temperature using reverse hand -clone. And so I'm going to say that my temperature guess to start with is the summation of yi, because that's what I know, ti sat. You know, ti sat coming from reverse Antoine's and the pressure that is known. Okay. So that gives me some, you know, that gives me some guess temperature. Okay. Now that I have a temperature, because what else don't I know? I don't know gamma i, I don't know pi sat. Um, oh, that might be something else I don't know. I can't remember. Okay. Um, okay, do I have enough to get... PI sat. Okay, yeah, so I can get, so I can use this to get PI sat. Yay. Okay, do I have enough to get gamma I? No, I don't. Because gamma I also depends upon XI, which I still don't have. And so what did I do when I didn't know XI in the past? I had to assume something. Yeah, I have to assume that gamma I equals 1. Okay. I have to assume that to begin with, exactly. So I'm gonna, I can get my pi sense, but I can't get my gamma. So I gotta assume gamma I equals one. All right. So if I look at this one, okay. So I know this one. I know this one. Um, I have a value for that guy. I have a value for that guy. What am I missing? I'm missing xi. Okay. Um, and so it says, you know, so if I solve for xi, it says, uh, uh, let's see, yi p over gamma i pi sense. Um, okay, so I could get x size right now. Okay. Um, but rather, when just like I did with the bubble temperature, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a weighting factor. Now, I, now normally my logic would probably not take me there. I know that because I've done this problem before, so my my logic's taking me a different place. But that's from experience. So you're, you're not at fault if you're like, okay, well now I have x i's, what did I guess first? And I guess you do come to the same conclusion. Okay, so I've got x i's, yay, what did I get first? I got a temperature. Oh, okay, how do I get a new temperature? And that's where I get to the logic of, I need a weighting factor. I need a weighting factor to fudge something. Now, should I use my weighting factor to fudge temperature? 
No. The reason why... Well, first off, I need a waiting factor, but let's, let's kind of foreshadow a little bit. Why? Well, let's get a waiting factor first. Okay, I'm back and forth. Okay, let's be wishy-washy. Let's, let's get a waiting factor first. So I have an XI, I have an equation I haven't used. What's the equation I haven't used yet? I haven't used this guy yet. Okay, so let's plug that in. Okay, so I have summation of YIP over gamma I P I set. It should equal one, it doesn't, so that's going to equal my waiting factor. Okay, now I have a waiting factor. What should I fudge? Okay, I could fudge temperature. There's nothing saying I shouldn't fudge temperature. What's the problem with fudging temperature, do you think? Well, what do you think would be the issue here? So let's say my waiting factor is, I don't know, let's say this is 1.2. Okay. What do you think the problem with fudging the temperature would be? Let's say my temperature, my guess, was 400. And so if I did 1.2, it would now be 480. Or if I divided by, you know, more like, I, I don't know, maybe 300 and, um, uh, uh, you know, 350 or something. Yeah, who knows? That's a huge change in temperature. Okay. You know, if this goes to 480, or this goes to 350, Whichever way would make sense. Okay. That's a huge change. I mean, that is enormous. Okay. Um, and so, wow, I don't know if I want to change it that much. Okay. So I want to try and change something that, something that depends upon temperature, but it isn't temperature. And something that isn't going to, you know, is is not going to change temperature directly so much. Okay. That if I if I fudge if I fudge the number whatever I'm thinking of by 1.2 temperature won't change that much. It will only change a little bit. And so I have I have to look at things that are a function of temperature. Okay, I'll look at here. Okay, well I have two things that are a function of temperature. Which one makes more sense? Should I fudge gamma or should I fudge pi sat? If I fudge gamma, okay, well that would become 1.2, <laughs> obviously. Um, the reason why I don't want to fudge gamma is because it also has a dependency upon x, and it it makes things a little confusing. Okay, so it makes more sense to fudge pi sat because it's only a function of temperature. And so we want to use this weighting factor to fudge pi set. Okay, how do we do that? Do we multiply it? Do we divide it by it? The thing to remember is always keep p on top. Okay. And so in this case, to keep p on top, we multiply. So p1 sat new is equal to p1 sat old times my weighting factor. And so, okay, let's say this was 50. Um, okay, 1.2, now it's 60. And I'm like, well, 60 compared to 50 is just as much as 480 compared to 400. The thing is, though, when I do reverse Antoine's, when I do reverse Antoine's, I'm doing the natural log. So yes, the number changed by 20%, which is pretty big. But because I natural logged it, I basically have a natural log of 20%, which is a lot smaller of a change. Okay. Um, and so the natural log didn't change that much. The log changed, I mean, the, 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 the number changed a lot, but the natural log didn't change that much. Okay. And so this is only going to change the temperature maybe like 10 or you know, 10 degrees rather than 80 degrees. Uh, which is a lot safer in terms of when it comes to optimization algorithms and just algorithms in general. So, okay. so that's why we choose P1 set um, to wait. Okay. So we fudge P1 set, okay. and now that we have P1 set, we can get a new T. And then what do we do when we got a new T? Well, I mean, after we got T, we, we, got, we got new P sets, okay, so let's, 
Let's say this goes to PSAT. Okay, what else did we get? Ah, we got new gamma. We got gamma. We said it was equal to one. Okay, do I have enough information to get gamma? Well, what's the function again? Temperature and composition. Do I have x's? Did I ever calculate x's? I did. Okay. Um, but, okay, in this, did anything change? Okay, so gamma, that hasn't changed yet. Did my PI stats change though? Yeah, so my PI stats changed. Now they're a little bit better, right? So let's, let's use these new PI stats right here and get new x's. And now that I have x's, now that I can get gammas. But like with do pressure, I, I shouldn't just use those gammas and kind of move forward. Um, it, the reason why is it's going to make your algorithm unstable. And, you know, this is all. And this, when this algorithm was first developed, it was all about computational efficiency. Because let me, you know, let's face it, doing this by hand is a chore. So could you do it in like, okay, I use these gammas and I go get a new weighting factor and then I get a weighting factor? Could I do it that way? Probably. I would say it wouldn't. It wouldn't. It wouldn't change the answer any, um, but it might change the level of computation, okay? And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to minimize the amount of computation, okay? We're just, and we're also just trying to think about things in an iterative, algorithmic manner. This is, this is numeracy also. It's algorithmic, it's a form of numeracy called algorithmic thinking, okay? And so we've got to think about this thing in an algorithmic, iterative way, okay? And I need two loops because i got two unknown variables within gamma that are, you know, gamma has that exponential. So I have, because I both don't know xi and I, and I don't know t, and they're both in the exponential associated with gamma, I need two loops to do that. Okay, so I want to keep doing this until that one little loop at this temperature, so keep doing this until they don't change, but at this temperature. Now that I have a reasonable set of x i's and gamma i's, okay, now I can go back to my weighting factor and get a new temperature. But I'm forgetting something in here. What am I missing? I missed something critical in doing this. There's one major thing that I missed that is just absolutely critical. What do you think it was? I didn't renormalize. When I'm doing this subloop, I have to renormalize, or else things are going to go to heck in a handbasket. Okay. So I wouldn't, you know, when I'm doing the weighting factor, I don't want to renormalize because if I renormalize, my weighting factor is going to be one, and I'm going to be done, quote unquote. No, I'm, but when I'm doing this little subloop, that is when I want to renormalize. Okay, because that way my gamma doesn't blow up and get just this crazy unrealistic value. Okay. So, and then I'm just going to keep doing that until I get the answer.